exciting because this is the first meeting since our kickoff party. Woo! Woo! And we are ready. Everybody who came to the kickoff party had like a total blast, so if you missed it, too bad for you. But this is the first meeting of the 2012-2013 year. We got a lot of really cool, fun stuff that we have going on, and I'm really excited about it, and I hope you guys will be too, okay? Um, turn off your cell phones. That's an old rule that's still going to stick. I want you guys to meet somebody. Oh, no. Miss Angie, bring her on up, will you? Bring her on up. This is my granddaughter, Arbor Lauren. She was born on the 17th, which was last. Was that the
it's your job to give them away, okay? Let everybody know what we're, what we're about. Invite somebody, all right? If they see you using it, be like, yeah, I know this is a cool pen. Do you want it? Okay? And everybody wants one. You should have gotten a purple one. You'd get rid of it. What? Yeah, purple ink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, yeah, okay. purple ink costs more, so sorry about that. Um, okay. And then I already gave out the bracelets to the people who did the challenge, didn't I? Chris, did you get a bracelet? I'm going to bring you one back. You have to have them all up there. No. <laughs> These special rides above bracelets could have been gotten with doing one challenge if you would have done the challenge. I broke mine. You said I got one. What challenge is this? What challenge? The challenge, the bonus challenge was to write out your personal testimony of what Rise Above has meant to you in your life. Okay? How it's changed you, um, whatever it means to you. And the reason why I wanted you guys to do that is because next meeting, 9-11, okay? Next meeting, Cabot Ray with Channel 4 is going to be here at our meeting. And I want to give him some letters and he is going to want to interview some of you guys um, and ask you that same question. Is this it? Yeah. He is going to want to ask you. Who, who's this for? Do you have a bracelet already or not? This is my fifth challenge. Woohoo, guys! Yeah, yeah. Yes! Oh, my God. She don't deserve a point. So. better than the rest, and those are the ones that I'll be like, Kevin, you need to talk to Corey, or whoever's yeah. letter that I think is wonderful, and that you, if you want to be on camera. Now, if you don't want to be on the news, let me know ahead of time, we'll make sure that you don't get on the news, okay? I'll be on the news. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, how many of you guys were here last year when they were here and they did this, the first story? <laughs> okay, so not very many of you. Um, Cabot Wright is a really, really, really nice guy. And he is very interested in Rise Above. As a matter of fact, I did not contact him this time. He contacted me and said, hey, I can't stop thinking about you guys. I'm wondering how you're doing. I'd like to come back and do a follow-up story. And I was like, yeah, we'd love to have you back. So um, we got a lot of publicity, publicity last year um, because our group was new and things had just happened. And he did a wonderful, wonderful story for us um, that they aired several times on the news. Um, and it, it just did wonders for our group. So I really hope that this, this year's story turns out as well. And I'm hoping that you guys can kind of talk to him and give your ideas on what you've gotten from Rise Above over the past year. Um, I know that there's a lot of you that have been coming and you've told me that it's changed your life. So I just want you to be able to share that with other people, okay? All right. Um, kickoff party. The kickoff party was a wonderful success. We had a blast. It was so much fun. Um, if you missed it, you missed a wonderful time. We had great weather. We had great food. We played fun games. I ran around like a fool. It was a blast. Okay. So don't miss when we have events. Okay. They are they are a lot of fun. But we are definitely ready to get kicked off. And after I teach you guys a little bit of a lesson. Um, I'm going to be telling you what I have in store for you as far as kicking this year off. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay? Alright, starting in September, we're going to have meetings twice a month. That does not mean every other week. It means twice a month. The second Tuesday and the last Tuesday. Okay? I will put it on Facebook. You will get a piece of paper when you leave here that says this is when our next meeting is. Okay? We'll do the very best that we can to make sure that everybody is informed as to when our meetings are. But we're going to go to twice a month because once a month is not enough for me to get hugs from you. Okay? So I need more than that. Um, our next meeting is September 11th. All right? So last month's challenge was to find a new friend at the start of school. You were supposed to sit with them at lunch, give them your Rise Above pen, and invite them. How many of you guys did that? Well, one stand up if you did it. I did one part of it.
with you tonight? Mm. Extra prize. <laughs> Yay for that. Let's do better next time, okay? Give yourselves a hand. All right. Before we get into the meat of the lesson, Katie has asked to say a few words, so I'm going to let her have the podium. Yeah, Katie. I'm just kidding. Katie, Katie. Katie, Katie. Quickly, Miss Katie. Try it. Okay, uh, a friend, well, it's not really a friend, but we're not really that close, but he, um, was riding his bike through a dirt path a cut, it's like two or three days ago and his front tire and his handlebars like fell completely off his bike and he went forward and smashed his face and his shoulder on the dirt and he was in the hospital for like three or four hours before they could even touch him besides his CAT scan to see if he'd broken anything in his face and he had to have surgery because he had like dirt literally caked in his eye. They said that he could have came home yesterday. I don't know if they did, if he did, but he, if not, he would have came home today. I haven't heard anything else, but I just want people to pray for him. And what is his name? Danny. Danny. Sounds like it related to me. So. <laughs> yes? Uh, update on Sean. Update on Sean, please. We haven't seen him for a while. He's, he was, went to the hospital last week because where's he has to take steroids for his kidneys, and it completely like ruined his immune system. Uh -huh. And he caught a virus, so he was hospitalized for four days. And he came back home, and he's doing better now, but his kidney is failing. I'll donate my kidney. Okay. Um, so please remember Sean in your prayers. Um, as well, Susan, Allie's mom, is also in the hospital. So if you are a praying person, please pray for these people. If you guys don't mind, we'll take just a minute here and say a prayer if, um, for these people really quickly because I am a praying person. So um, we just want to ask God on their behalf. Yes? Can you say a prayer for my friend's uh, sister? Her baby is a new for another three months and she's already in my birth. And, and her name is Ashton. Ashton? Ashley. Ashley. All right. Everyone just bow your head for just a second. <laughs> Dear Lord, we just thank you for this time that we have together, Lord. We just we just come to you on the behalf of these people that, whose names have been spoken tonight, Lord. For Ashley, for Sean, for Danny and Susan, Lord. We just know that they're in the, the palm of your hand, and we just pray that your will would be done. Lord, we know that things come to our lives for different reasons and different purposes, and we accept those purposes. But, Lord, we just pray that you would grant strength where strength is needed for these people today. Lord, we ask for healing, but more than anything, we just ask that your presence be made known. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Okay. So, um, I need Ben. Where did he go? He's like... He'll be right there. He's a guy. Okay. Got this? He's a guy. Who said that? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's guys, but he knew that I was going to need him. So I don't know how to run the computer here, and it's part of my lesson. While we're waiting, I will let you guys know that Rise Above made it into the yearbook at Sheridan. So yay. Did you know in that the thing for Lauren, they said that she passed away in Lancaster, Ohio? She was on her way to Lancaster. Oh, yeah, but it made me mad because it said yes. in Lancaster, Ohio. So here we are. Yeah. Yay, yay, rise above. I that this morning. So um, I'll just give a little bit of background for the group, for those of you that don't know. Um, the reason this poster is up here is this is my daughter, Lauren. Um, she was killed in a car accident last year. She was 16 years old. Um, Fourth of July, she and her boyfriend were on their way to um, see the fireworks. And um, Lauren was bubbly and sparkly and just a crazy mess. But um, on the inside, she was very much hurting inside. 
Um, she had been bullied a lot the year before, actually a few years leading up to her death. Um, as to one year, she even got beat up six times at school. Um, one of the times ended her up in the hospital. I mean, she just had so many problems with people. Um, so this group was formed in her memory and in her honor um, to try to help us to be able to deal with the bullying situation. It does seem like it's coming to a head more these days. Um, there's a lot, it's always been there in schools, but it seems like people are a lot more aware of it now. And it's becoming a lot worse because of Facebook and Twitter and, you know, when you go home, you can't really get away from bullying anymore. It's still there. You still have your cell phone, you know. Someone can just badger you to death. So this group is about self-esteem, and it's also about learning how to deal with those kinds of situations. Okay? Yes, Katie? Um, we have, like, our senior talk with Kenny or whatever. Mm -hmm. He said that fights have gone down. Like last year, fights have gone down. Oh, yeah. Fights have gone down? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, yeah. For girls. Yeah. Kind of love them, though. And you know what? That's saying something because from the very beginning, they have never given us very much of uh, props. And they've, they've always kind of been against us. So we've just kind of been going against the grain. And we're like, we're not going away. We're still here. We're still going to do things. What, what is the, the main way that we can change our schools and our communities? What do we preach here? Start with yourself. yourself. Change yourself. That's right. You can't change anybody but yourself. And so that's what this group is about, learning to change your ways so that your environment around you changes as well. Okay? And a lot of you have seen that happen. I won't ask for a show of hands, but I know a lot of you have seen that happen. When you start acting differently, people start acting differently towards you. So this is more about how to overcome the things that you might not even know that you have a problem with, like tonight. Show us a picture, man. Oh, no. <laughs> I want you guys to think in your heads, okay? Think in your heads when I show you this series of pictures, what would you label this person as? Is this someone you would want to be a friend to? Is this someone you would talk to in the hallway? Why or why not? Okay, so there she is, beautiful lady. Next one. No. <laughs> beautiful lady again. Look at her. She's gorgeous. Okay. Next. And everyone said, "Oh, babies are so cute. Nobody would bully a baby with that." I would. <laughs> okay. Next. Oh. Yeah. Not take 
time to be friends with this girl. I will. Okay? Actually, I'm friends with her. She could probably help me do more homework. Yeah, maybe so. I'll take a magnet to it. Jeez! That's a good boy! I mean, because, I mean, like at the schools I went to, 
She wouldn't want to be associated with me being friends with her. Absolutely. That's a good that point. Is best case. That is a good point. Yeah. Sometimes we would want to be friends with that person because we're compassionate, right? We belong to a compassionate rise above group. Why not? We're friends with everybody. I love what they teach them when Kyla started school. Everybody is friends in the first grade. Mm -hmm. And it's true. They are. Oh. Everyone, no matter what you look like, you're friends. Okay? It's only when we become older that we start to judge. Yes, ma'am. I think the social media paints a picture of normal. Absolutely. People just go by it. That's why I put up the pictures of the beautiful ladies first, because I got them straight. I, I Googled beautiful woman. This is the kind of stuff that comes up. Okay? But the, the lady with the Cuban cigar in her mouth didn't come up when I Googled beautiful woman. You know? Who's, who decides what's beautiful and what's not? Um, I, know, I also have something to go with what she said. I, like me and my mom, because my mom's not like real skinny, but she's not like the biggest ever, but she always like, when we go shopping, she'll be like, they need to make real women clothes and everything, and like all the Victoria's Secret models and stuff. I literally counted one commercial on the TV within a movie time, mm -hmm. and there was only one commercial with like a bigger woman, and that was Wendy's. And you know what? Like, Wendy. Whenever I do see, whenever I do see a commercial, an ad or a movie that showcases someone who's bigger, I think, man, hats off to them. They know what's up. They know the beauty does not come in one size. Okay? I mean, it takes a bigger person to realize that, you guys. Yes. Even in that size, it may not be always beautiful. You know, like, right. you don't judge people what they look like. You judge what, what they are inside. Right. Now, we're going we're gonna to stop and, and stay here just a little bit tonight so you guys can get the full gist of what I'm talking about, okay? Now, our minds, even though our minds tell us to like or dislike someone based on what they look like, we can train ourselves to be blind to that kind of thing. That doesn't mean we need to walk around with a blindfold on, okay? But it means when you do walk down the hallway and you see someone that's different from you, to consciously think in your mind, you know what, I should go out of my way to say hi to that person because I'm afraid of them or because they're different than me, okay? That gives me reason to get out of my comfort zone, get out of the box and practice what kind of person that I want to be. Is there anyone here that doesn't want to be a compassionate, loving person? If, to if so, you're in the wrong place. To a certain extent, though. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to teach you, okay? It does not come naturally. Now, when you're little, when you've got little baby Arbor, where is she? Right there. Little baby Arbor, everybody loves little babies because they're cute. Okay, even when babies aren't so cute, we love them anyway. Why? Because they're so innocent. Because they're innocent. Because they haven't done anything to hurt us yet. Because they haven't done anything for us to say, you're wrong. Okay? Babies don't do that. Same with dogs. Even the ugly dog that we had up there. Someone loves that dog because it is probably a nice dog that's not making that ugly face. Okay? <laughs> but even the cutest dog, if it's, if it's at your feet yapping all the time, you're going to want to kick it, right? <laughs> okay, there's a dog. Okay. So our actions do determine what makes us beautiful or not beautiful. Is anybody here that doesn't want to be beautiful? I'm very beautiful. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to be beautiful. How about on the inside? Yeah. Okay. I want to be myself. That's it. Yourself. Thank you. That's what I want. I want you to be yourself. And the reason I that I try to teach this to you every single time you guys come here is because I want people to see the real beauty that's inside of you. I don't want people to judge you. Now, are they going to? Yes. Unfortunately, they are going to judge you. That's just the way society is. But if you can keep yourself from judging other people, 
Who's to say that someone else won't see you doing that and they'll keep from judging you because they see that you're not judging someone else? It's kind of like the domino effect. Yes? Yeah. What if you're like, you say that, you, that people want to see the beauty, the beauty on the inside. What if you barely know anybody who has like constant beauty on the inside? There's and you need to get to know more people. Well, no, I mean like not <laughs> everybody is always so perfect. When no, so. not everybody. You know what? Nobody is perfect. There was one perfect man. His name was Jesus. Yeah, okay. okay, they crucified him. So if you're perfect, you're probably not going to be very popular anyways. Okay? I'm not talking about being perfect. And I'm not talking about anybody out there being beautiful all the time. Just trust me, even I am not beautiful all the time. Yeah, I have emotions. Okay. The thing is, when you are not at your best, and it will happen, you are going to show your ugly side. Okay? To, that you are the first person that realizes it. That you don't need to have someone call you out and say, you know what, you're being a psh. No. You need to be the first one to say, I'm sorry, I was not at my best. When I called you that name, I was wrong. I apologize. You know? You need to be the first one to recognize yourself and what's going on inside of yourself is not right. Be the first one to apologize. The quicker you get it out of the way, the more people are going to see that inner beauty inside. You know what? There's something different about Katie. You know? There's something different about her because I didn't have to call her out. She realized she was wrong. You know? She apologized to me first. That never happens. Yes, Chris? When I was in my senior year week and my like, science class was talking about the body, and most people have a symptom where they want to accuse other people of the actions that happen. If they get no wreck, they don't want to blame it on themselves. They want to blame it on other people. If they don't do that more, they find something else to blame it on. But the neuron just isn't activated until you try to fight it and take acceptance for what really happens, and you put it on yourself. Right. And when you do it, it makes your body so much more stronger in every way. And you can teach yourself that. That's why you guys are here. To learn better ways to act and react. Okay. Uh, trying to be good like, inside and trying to be a beautiful person and stuff, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So how would you like keep trying? Like sometimes you're like, I really don't feel like being a nice person. I don't I get I give up, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. People just get under your skin and like push you so far to the point where you're like, I'm not gonna try and help you anymore, so True. <laughs> True. And that's that's okay. You don't have to help everybody. You don't have to get along with everybody. Okay? You do have to, what do we teach here? Start from the Respect. Respect. You do have to respect. Why do we have to respect other people? Because it takes respect to get respect to yourself. No. Yes. <laughs> Not what I'm looking for. Anybody else? Everyone's human. Yes? Everyone's human. Everyone's human. Yes. Human. Okay? I deserve respect. You deserve respect. You deserve respect. Based on the fact that we are human. We make mistakes, but we're still human. We have different views on politics, but we're still human. We have different views on religion, but we're still human. I go to work, you go to school, but we're still human. Okay? Do you see what I mean? No matter what, issue you have with somebody, they're a human being just like you. They struggle with a lot of the same things that you struggle with. And if you give them the benefit of the doubt, nine times out of ten, they're going to give you the benefit of the doubt as well. Yes? What if they're just like a bad person in all the way? Like if you try to be nice and everything and respect them, and they're just like an awful person, and like they, I know people make mistakes, but they continually make the mistake over and over again and not even try to fix it. Yes. Then what is that person still doing in your life? I don't say nothing. Like, what if they don't quite involve them in your life, but they're still there? Like, you can't let them, you can't push them away. They're always there. Okay. You don't always need to push someone away. I have people like that in my life, guys. Um, they're not the people that I want to be best friends with and hang out. Do I have to treat them nicely? Absolutely. Okay? It's my responsibility because of the person that I want to be that I treat them nicely. Even if they never, ever, ever treat me nice back, it's still my responsibility. Why? 
Because I'm responsible for you. Yes, you're responsible for yourself. And every decision that you make is a direct reflection of the person that you are becoming, your character, okay? Who you want to be. If you want to be an ugly person and hateful all the time, you're in the wrong spot here, okay? Because I'm trying to teach you the opposite. But if you want to do better and you want to become a better person and you want to be kind, it takes practice. Just like Chris said, you can do it though. Yes, Katie? Sometimes when people acting out and doing those things need it the most. Absolutely. I deserve that. Let me give you a little story. In, in my case, um, when I go to Walmart, okay, and the cashier is mean to me, just a little, little bit, okay, and she is mad because I'm using reusable bags and she wants to give me an attitude, okay, and if I get an attitude back, all right, that's showing myself, which I don't need to do, but that cashier does not know that I lost a 16-year-old daughter. I could really be having a bad day that day. I could really be missing my daughter. Okay? And if she knew that, do you think she'd treat me a little bit differently? Possibly. Possibly, yeah. So you what I'm talking about is rather than me getting upset at the cashier, I should give her the benefit of the doubt. You know what? She doesn't know what I'm going through today, and I don't know what she's going through today. Okay? So everybody is going through something. You may know it, you may not know it, but everybody is going through something. So give people a little bit more of a chance. That's all I'm trying to say. Hi, Miss Allie. Good. Yay. Allie's here. Yes, Kate. Okay. Um, all right. You say you say to the benefit of the doubt. What if this thing in your life impresses you and makes you hate yourself? Okay. You probably already given them the benefit of the doubt. I am never, ever, ever going to tell you guys that it's right for you to be around somebody who makes you feel bad about yourself. No. Never. Okay? If there's someone in your life that is really that draining on you, you need to distance yourself from them, okay? And one more thing on that. Nobody has the power to make you hate yourself. Okay? You give them that power. So when, the, when someone is putting you down, and Lauren had this problem a lot, my daughter Lauren. She had this problem a lot. People would put her down and she would start to believe it. And I would always have to give her a pep talk. Lauren, just because somebody says something about you does not make it true. If I call you a garbage man, are you a garbage man? No. Okay? Doesn't matter what someone said. And she said, yeah, Bob, but mom, after so much, it wears me down. And I understand that. And that's when you have to distance yourself from those kind of people, okay? Don't surround yourself with people who are toxic for you. Surround yourself with people that are going to be positive in your life, that are going to lift you up and help you become the person you want to become. The person who brought you here tonight is probably one of those people for you because they care about you and they want you to do better, okay? They brought you to a positive place. Most of the people that are in this room right now are positive people. They want to do better. If you surround yourself with people that are positive, they're going to lift you up, not pull you down. And it's your responsibility to decide who you want to spend your time with. Okay? All right. I'm glad I'm getting a lot of feedback here. So, Love you. out of all the ugly pictures, ugly, that we labeled ugly, which one of those pictures do you think you of those people do you think you'd be most likely to be friends with if you had to pick one? Justin Bieber? No. <laughs> a mean dog. Friends. A mean dog. Why? Because they be using for car alarms now. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. All of them except for the five trillion billion trillion. Okay. Pick, pick one that you would pick to be friends with. I don't have a best friend now. So if you had to pick, if you had only those ugly people in your hallway and you had to have a friend, which one would you pick? That one <laughs> That's the one I would pick. You want to know why? Yeah. Ruben has fun. I know why. Because he's smiling. Because he looks like he's having a good time. Okay? Now, is he different than me? Yeah. He's different than me. Okay? In a lot of different ways. But he definitely is someone who I would come up and say, dude, man, what's up? How are you today? Because he looks like he is having a blast. And I wouldn't have one bit of problem talking to him. Okay? 
This is what I'm talking about. If you can pick one thing, one thing, if you can pick one thing out of someone that would make you comfortable enough to be able to talk to them, usually that one thing is a smile. Okay? So why am I telling you this? So we can smile more. Because I want you guys to smile more. Right. Okay? If you walk around like this all the time, and trust me, I've done it for the past year. Okay? You walk around like this all the time. No, nobody's going to be friends with you. Matter of fact, it doesn't take long until the people who did talk to you stop talking to you. Okay? I know this. This happened to me at work. I was sad. And rightfully so, for a long time, okay? I just recently, in probably about the last month or so, started lifting my head up and smiling at people and saying good morning again, okay? And people are like, oh, it's okay to talk to her? I can talk to her, I can say hi, you know? Like, and it just seems like they're more comfortable with it just because I lifted my head up and I can smile, okay? Now, for a long time, I didn't feel like smiling. There's nothing wrong with that. But make it a practice to fake it till you make it sometimes, guys. Even when you don't feel like smiling, try. Okay? Because if you go too long without doing it, it's going to be really hard for people to feel comfortable enough to approach you. Okay, I, like, I don't know if this goes with this, but I have a question. Okay, you know there's like extremely like far out there people and you're like, your friends are always like, oh my gosh, this is you agree, but you don't want to say it because you're afraid you're not rising above. What do you say instead of yeah, I agree or no, I disagree? You don't have to say anything. Or pay yourself into the subject. You ever heard? You ever heard your mom or your grandma say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't, don't say anything at all? all? Yes. There's I truth to that. that. So much. There's truth to that. Okay. And my mom said it all the time too, and I always said the same thing you did, Katie. Yeah, whatever, whatever. What no. Seriously, it works. What if we just laugh because, like, it's no, you don't laugh because when you laugh, you're agreed. I know, but it's. She's talking about me. No, I'm serious. Yeah. If I'm sitting here and I'm talking about Allie, <laughs> listen up. Okay, this is important. If I'm talking about Allie and I'm saying bad things about her, okay, and I'm sitting here this way, and you're just laughing, instantly, Katie's gonna think you agree, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's even worse? Katie's going to go back and tell Allie. You know what? Not only was Shannon talking about you, but Katie was laughing, so she was talking about you too. Okay, that's how rumors get started. And you can say, I wasn't talking, all I did was laugh. No, you agree by laughing. Okay, so if you do agree and you don't want to get caught not rising above, okay, you want to do the right thing, what is something else that you could do instead? Walk away, yes, walk away. Because you don't want to do something that's wrong, you can walk away. Even You can even make up an excuse, okay? You can even say, you know what, guys, I gotta go to the bathroom, or whatever, okay? Get yourself out of that situation so that you are not having to control yourself, for lack of a better word. Very hard okay? <laughs> it, but work on it, because it, it can be done, yes. Okay. How about that? What did I come about? What? Did you have something else to say? Or? <laughs> oh, change the subject. I thought you wanted me to change the subject. No, okay. You can change the subject. Or you can call them out and say, you know what? I, I just really don't like to talk about people. And then, you know. You agree. No, you, you don't have to. There is someone I do. There is thinking. I agree, but you don't want to say it out loud. What if it is will tell Allie and then Allie will make What? What if it truly is a person that, like I was talking about earlier, that truly is a bad person you don't, like, and like your friends are saying something, but you, you truly do agree because it may be true. Yeah. But Even if it's true, does it need to be said? No. Like, what if you don't say it, though? But like, if you're thinking it. If you're involved in that situation, and you are involved while everybody else around is talking bad, it makes you guilty too. You're guilty by association. Okay? Yeah. Yes. All right. Then Say someone treats you really bad and you're ranting about it to someone else. Say, I'm talking to Corey, my best friend. And she's agreeing that what they did was wrong and that they're jerks or whatever about it. That, I think that's what you're trying to say. Okay? If, if it is just you two, you are alone, 
there's nobody else around, and you are together as a best friend. You don't tell anybody else. Okay? Yeah. Right. Nobody else can be involved in that conversation. It does not go on Facebook. Okay? It's just you and Corey talking about it because you need to vent to her as a best friend. Now, that can be done with a, con with a condition. What is the condition? Anybody know? Trust. No. Oh. Besides keeping it, besides keeping it um, just between you two, the condition that I'm looking for is no name calling. Okay? Oh, so because funny. when you said that, Kate, you said, okay, what if it's true and they're doing this and doing and that was wrong and they're a jerk? How many of you guys heard her say that? A jerk for us. Doing it. Okay, no. I don't care. Names don't need to be called, okay? You can say, this person did this to me, they were wrong, I'm hurt. Okay? But there's no need to call them a name. Because when name calling starts, it's a whole different it's a ball of wax. Okay? Something it's, not, it's, it's not fair though when somebody like okay. Somebody calling you names yeah. and you have you have no way other other way to do that. Hey it's just something that you believe. How is if you are calling someone a name that you're right. Correct. I bet when Adolf Hitler was a baby or a young child, probably it was like wasn't as bad as it grew up to be. Okay? Some people do have bad tendencies. There is evil in the world. I'm not denying that. Okay? But is it your job to judge someone? No. No. Okay? So when you call someone a name, you're in essence judging them. You're saying they are a. If they wrong you in such a way to where it it breaks you, what makes it? Okay, they wrong you. It breaks you. It hurt you. Okay, it doesn't involve them. They did something wrong, but all the things that you said is they broke you. They hurt you. They were mean to you. You feel bad. Okay? It doesn't have anything to do with what kind of person they are. You can say, I feel bad because of what they did to me. I'm having a rough time because of what they did to me. But you don't need to say, they are a blank. Okay? Because that's not up to you to judge that. Yeah. All right? And that makes you a, that makes you a kind of a person that's not as, as much in control as they need to be if you feel like you need to resort, resort to hate call. Okay? You don't have to call names to get your point across that you hurt. All right? Refraining from calling names is the harder thing to do. It's the more grown up thing to do, but it is hard. I will give you that, okay? And I'm not getting on tape for anything, you guys. I know that this is something you all struggle with because I struggle with it too. I'm just trying to teach you what the right thing to do is so that you can stop. And maybe next time, you'll still call that person a name, but maybe you'll think afterwards, you know what? I handled that wrong. I should have stopped before I called her a name. Okay? And maybe the time after that, you might get it right. Yes. Okay, what if somebody puts their self, purposely puts their self out there to be something, and then they cry about being called what they're purposely putting their self out there? Were you want to call them something? No, they just, it's annoying when they do that. And All I'm saying is, have no control you over have, us, but it's just no, like, you don't. You don't have control over anyone but you. And that's what I'm trying to teach you. You guys can rise above that. You can rise above name calling. Okay? Name calling is something that third graders do. Okay? It's not something that kids your age do. This is something that you guys should be growing out of. Okay? And I'm trying to teach you. Maybe you call names because they deserve it or because they hurt you. Or, no! There's not ever any reason that you should call someone a name. Amen. All right? All right, we got all of the tangent. Sorry. We're in the big class. So, I'm, I'm really glad you guys are contributing, though, because this, this helps me to know that, that I'm helping you in some way. All right, so I want to give you three words.
anybody know the difference between these? Yeah, it could be this. Yeah. No, I know. Hate. Prejudice is judging somebody before you know them. Racism is judging somebody on their race. And discrimination is judging and. Uh, discrimination. Like, just. Bashing. Yeah, bashing. Sort of. Everybody. Okay, they're all very similar. You got two out of three, right? Yes. Discrimination is acting upon it, doing something. Yes. To yes. So oh. prejudice. Oh, is it an unfavorable opinion or a feeling that you get uh, without any reason? Okay? I have prejudice against Rick. I don't know why. He just looks funny to me. So I don't like him. Okay? That's prejudice. <laughs> um, racism is going a little bit further and deciding that you are better than somebody because of the way that you are as opposed to the way that they are. Okay? Saying, I am better than you because I'm white and you're black. Okay? That's racism. Uh, discrimination is like Kate said, acting upon it. Alright? Making a distinction based on a group or category instead of on individual merit. Instead of me saying, you know what, Harley got here because of her hard work. No, I discriminated against her because she's got brown hair and I gave the promotion to somebody else, even though she worked harder, okay? That's discrimination. Do you guys understand the difference between those? Okay, now, we want to go, we're running really, yeah, okay. We want to go from racism to graceism. What do you guys think graceism might be? Not yeah. judging a person? Not Not judging a person. What? A little bit more than that. What else? Mm -hmm. It's a new. It's what? All around being a good person. No, not quite. Um, gracism is not just tolerating somebody that's different from you. Okay. Not discriminating. Not being prejudiced. But gracism is actually including people that are different from you in your daily life. Going out of your way to talk to someone who looks different, okay, or is from a different um, background, or is from um, a different financial background than you. Anything, okay? People discriminate on lots of different things. Age, all right? The fact that you guys come here and listen to me, even though I'm an old lady, okay, that proves that you've got racism towards me, okay? You include me in your life. Uh, religion. Not everyone here is Christian. I'm Christian, but those of you that aren't, come and listen to me ramble on anyway, and I appreciate that. You're giving me grace by allowing me to share my view with you, and I, in turn, listen to you as well. Okay? Um, looks, financial or social status, sexual orientation, you know, if you're gay or whatever, gracism would be being a friend to someone who is gay, even though you don't necessarily go that way, okay? Including someone in your life, even though they have different beliefs than you, all right? Political views, yes, we don't even need to go there. Yes, that's like with me, my best friend's uh, atheist. Uh-huh. I means you don't believe in God. I believe in God, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean, I mean, we're still best friends. And I mean, one of my best guy friends, he's gay, I'm not gay. Right. One of my best friends is gay. I'm not. I don't even. I don't even um, incorporate that as a belief that of something that I believe in. But she is, and I respect her. That that's what she does believe in. And we're almost. We're very, very good friends. I love her to pieces. Okay. So something that you disagree with someone on, even if it's something as important as your religion, or you know something that's really, really important to you. Even if you disagree with someone, you can still be friends with that person. You can still respect that person. Why? Because they are human. Human, right. Okay? Your life experience is going to be richer if you include as many different types of people as you can. Okay? You never know. You might like somebody with piercings all over their face. All right? Give them a chance. All right? Getting to know someone. Getting to know someone doesn't mean that they have to be your best friend, okay? However, they may become a good friend. And at the very least, by including them and talking to them, you've made them feel like a real person. How many of you guys have ever gone through school and walked down the hallways and felt like everyone just thinks you don't exist? No, no that's the total opposite. Okay. <laughs> Lots of people feel that way sometimes, okay?
okay? Especially people that are different. How many people saw the movie uh, that we showed on, on Saturday? Okay? This is, it was called To Save a Life. Very sad. And it was a really good movie, and it showed that um, some of the people that were in that movie, they weren't necessarily being bullied by someone saying, oh, you suck, you suck, you know, beating them up. But they were bullied from the fact that they were excluded. Okay? No one talked to them. And when no one talks to you and you're not included in society, it's very easy to get depressed. It's very easy to want to cut. It's very easy to want to take your life. Um, things like that. Now, it's our responsibility, not only as Rise Aboveers, but as fellow human beings, to make sure that we go out of our way to make people feel their own worth. Each person has worth. Each person. I don't care who you are. You have worth. And it's up to us to make sure that each person knows they have worth. Okay? Sometimes all it takes is me coming up and talking to you. What's your name, Molly? <laughs> yeah. Literally, just coming up and saying, hey, you know what? I seen you in the hall yesterday. I just wondered if you want to sit down and have lunch. You know? What do you like to do? My name's Shannon. You know? Okay? What's the best way to get to know someone? Talking? About what? Yourself.
this year, we're going to divide into teams. We're going to have four teams, red, yellow, green, blue. Okay. Blue. Um, we are going to be getting points for like everything. You get points if you come. You get points if you do the challenge. You get points if you bring a newbie. You get points um, if you do the bonus challenge. You get points for just about everything. Okay. We're going to keep track of the points. For the teams, and next week or next meeting, when you come in here, I will have it up on the wall which teams have how many points, and we're going to keep track every week. Okay? And at the end of the school year, the winning team is going to get a trophy, and they're going to get all new Rising Love t shirts, and they will not be the purple t shirts that we have now. They're going to be a different design. Win. Win. They're going to be something really cool. Okay? So, what we're going to do. Oh yeah, we're gonna play. We're gonna play games too. Icebreaker games today. So not today, but at the next meeting we will. Um, so if your team wins the game, like when we played the potato game and everything out there, if your team wins the game, you get points. Okay. Um, if you come to a fundraiser or an event, you get points. Um, oh yes, and the most important thing this year is we need to get Rise Above out there. We need to get our name out there. We need to let people know what we are, who we stand for, okay, or what we stand for. Um, lots of people have heard of Rise Above, but not a lot of people know what we're about. And the reason why I want to make sure that we get this out there this year is because when bullying is a problem in your school, um, what, what are we trying to get the new thing now? We want to make bullying not right? How many of you guys are afraid to stop a fight? No. Oh, okay. well, yeah. Yeah. Get into it. Okay. You have multitudes of reasons why you're afraid to stop a fight. But, if we get Rise Above out there, and we have enough people in Rise Above, and you're standing around watching a fight, and you see six other people who you know are in Rise Above and will back you up too, you're going to be a lot more likely to step in and say, you know what, that's enough, you guys, come on. Really? Okay? Because you know you've got six other people backing you up. We need to grow this organization. The only way we're going to get to do this is through you guys. What's going on back there? She's distracting. Oh. <laughs> I know this isn't as fun as my lesson, but no, you just, no, your lesson is box awesome. nice. <laughs> so, this brings me to the last part of our group thing, and that is each week when we divide into our groups, okay? Each week when we divide into our groups, you're going to have probably about 10 minutes is all I'm going to give you. This is not share time, talk time. This is time for you to sign in with your group leader, get tally for all your points, and then you guys are going to brainstorm. And what you're going to do is you're going to have a bonus team community challenge for that week. And it's up to you to come up with what your challenge is. Okay? The challenge needs to be, it needs to be something that's going to be responsible for getting Rise Above out there. Whether it be, okay, our team's going to put up posters this week. Or our team's going to all wear our Rise Above shirts on Tuesday. Or just something like that, okay? That's going to be your special team challenge that you're going to get extra bonus points for. Yes. What are you going to do with the Rose? Um, I'm not ordering any more of the purple t-shirts um, anytime soon because I can't get people to prepay for them. And I just don't have the money to go more 20 t-shirts. They cost a lot of money. So... If you guys want to sign up for them and prepay, if I can get 20 people to do that, I can do another order. Otherwise, it's just going to have to wait. Now, these t-shirts that you're going to win, if you're the winning team, I'm going to pay for them. So they will be free. Okay? Yes. $15. Yes. Can you get one of the order like shirts like that? That's what I was just talking about. Okay. A t-shirt or $15, okay? So I have um, a sign-up sheet if you guys want to do that, but they have to be prepaid, all right? Any other questions? Okay, now, my group leaders, okay? Um, Angie and Waylon are the red team. Waylon, stand up. This is Waylon. Angie already left, but most of you know who she is, okay? Um, Bruce and Rick are the blue team. But she might separate them. Stand up. Why do I not make one? Okay, you, you might get the opportunity, alright? Amanda and Rachel, where's 
Let me get stand up. They're the yellow team. I have that shirt. And the green team for now is Gina and Chelsea, which Chelsea's not here. Gina may have to end up giving her team up to somebody else, so we will be working. That's going to be a work in progress. Now, the important thing is if you want to be a, an assistant group leader, you have to be here every meeting. You have to. Okay? You haven't been here in weeks, girl. Weeks has been months. like since May. Months. And we still have the same crappy birthday to me because I missed the one on my birthday, oh. the one after that, the one after that, and the one after that, and I'm here today. Let's we'll so. you in a minute. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count you off, and that's I'll, I'll tell you what teams you're going to be on. So, everybody just sit down for a second. Okay? Remember your numbers. One. 